All right, so that article had a lot of flaws, though, according to Catherine Flagel, including older, largely unrepresented data sets, erroneous coding of smoking data in one of the data sets, a statistical method that failed to adjust, cor adjust correctly for the confounding variables, and then easily identifiable customized calculation errors that required a correction to be published. So another researcher trying to do similar kind of st st statistical types of analysis on the obesity uh, uh, and as it relates to deaths from obesity, they weren't finding that there was uh, more. They, they had to fudge the data, so to speak, on the smoking statistics in order to make the obesity look worse. But Catherine Flagel said for their project, the way they did it, we developed a method that provided appropriate statistical adjustment for all of the confounding variables. In addition, we used recent and nationally representative data sets from the CDC directly our results were then published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2005. That is the most prestigious journal in all of medicine, JAMA. A comparison of some features of our article with the 2004 article uh, is shown in Table 1. So they show kind of a side-by-side -side on Table 1. Um, we found that obesity was indeed associated with death relative to normal weight people, although our estimate of less than 5% of deaths, a direct result of obesity, was considerably lower than the 2004 mock dad study, which estimated over 15%. So more than three times the number that Catherine Flagel found in her study was in the other study. The CDC accepted our results for obesity as the better estimate uh, a month after our article was published. So they had applied the 15 plus percent the year before with the 2004 one, but then Catherine Flagel's uh, study gets published in JAMA and they go back down to below 5%. Keep in mind, this is legit. This was all, it went through all the process. Watch what happens next because this is so applicable all of you that scream, follow the science, follow the science, follow the science. Watch what happened to Catherine Vlegel. This is, I'm just utterly amazed. We found that overweight was associated with slightly but significantly fewer deaths than normal weight people. A quick glance at the literature suggested that our findings about overweight were not particularly unusual. In other words, it was kind of common sense at the time. We were unprepared for the firestorm that was about to hit. Our article attracted attention because it appeared to be inconsistent with the 15 plus percent dramatic conclusions of the 2004 study. I fielded dozens of press calls as soon as our article got published. To my surprise, after the first few hours, many of the journalists who called me had already spoken to a prestigious professor, Walter Willett, from a prestigious school of public health. He's at Harvard, by the way. He was not a statistician. He had no experience in estimating the number of deaths associated with obesity. Our article was not intended to have anything to do with his work at all. Our article uh, got his attention, though. He had apparently begun preemptively contacting the press as soon as he found out about this. So this is telling you there are people at play that when they see something that goes against the narrative that they're trying to drive, and again, we're talking about nutritional health, but it applies to any part of science. There are people who have powerful influence, and Walter Willett is still one of those people to this day who has that kind of influence. He inserted himself into the discussion, positioning himself as an expert in the field of the discussion, and providing negative and antagonistic comments on the article before reporters had a chance to talk to the researcher directly. Did you hear all that? So here is Walter Willett basically saying, I know better than this researcher, therefore listen to me, and he got in the ear of the press. Sound familiar? What's happened the last year and a half? Have we had people that talk about things that have happened, that they have no 
evidence or background or anything at Bill Gates um, that, you know, they can just say things on the air? Yes. Yes, we have. Like I said, it's apl uh, applicable across lots of scientific disciplines. All right. So Walter Willett used strong language to disparage the article, describing it as, quote, really naive, deeply flawed, and seriously misleading. At a scientific conference a little over a week after our article appeared, uh, one of Walter Willett's co-authors uh, uh, co and cohorts at uh, Harvard, Frank Hugh is his name, another prestigious name in the world of research, um, took the unusual step of preempting a planned presentation by someone else to take the stage. In other words, he took the, the stage over someone else who had the stage so he could make this critique of this article by Catherine Flagel. Are you seeing how they're ganging up on her, you guys? And this happens more often in science than anybody wants to admit. And if we're not going to acknowledge that there are powerful influencers in the science, you can't really follow the science if there's people influencing real science happening. And that's all Catherine Flagel did was she published data that was science, but it ran against the narrative that they were trying to promote about obesity. When I presented a seminar at UC Berkeley a week after our article appeared, an unidentified young woman stood at the door giving out a handout of four pages of faxed and photocopied material that included an abstract from Frank Hugh and Walter Willett and several news articles that discussed their research on obesity. Isn't this amazing? Like to, when I read this from Catherine, I was like, oh my God, she is one person out of many that probably have to deal with this. Our 2005 article has been reviewed extensively by scientists within both the CDC and the NCI. It was cleared for publication by both of those agencies. It was reviewed by peer reviewers at the journal, and it was accepted by the number one top medical research uh, institute out there that does journals, the Journal of the American Medical Association, and all the editors, they all let it go through. So what was the problem? Nonetheless, less than a month after it was pu uh, published, a speaker from the American Cancer Society suggested in a talk that our article should not have been published, with one of his PowerPoint slides saying, quote, because of the importance of these estimates, scientific controversies should be addressed in a scientific forum that seeks consensus rather than immediately publicizing widely divergent estimates through the media. Can I tell you that is not science. Science is not about consensus. Science is not about being absolute about anything. Science is show me the data, show me the data, show me the data. And if there's conflicting data, then those two data points need to be analyzed and see who's right. Or maybe they're both wrong. Or maybe there's elements of both of them that are right. But you don't dismiss just because you, you would rather have a consensus and you don't like that something went off the narrative that you're putting out there. I get it, they got pissed off because they were trying to make it look like obesity is this humongous killer in America. More than 15% of all deaths in America are attributed to obesity. And then Catherine comes along and says, no, it's less than 5%. It's still bad, but it's not the grand, huge number that it was made out to be in the study the year before, which used flawed data. They were mad that they were upended by a real scientist. That's all this comes down to, guys. Perhaps feeling that lower estimates of obesity-related deaths were detrimental to the overall public health goals, some began casting, uh, casting around for explanations that would show that our estimates were less valid than the 2004 ones. There were fact sheets and lists of talking points. One of, one of them was called Damage Control for the Flagel Article. All of these began to circulate from various public health oriented groups, describing our estimates as problematic and giving misleading arguments as to why the 2004 estimates were better. 
The damage control talking points, for example, asserted that the 2004 paper was far superior because it had used data on, quote, diet and physical activity, end quote, even though the 2004 paper had not used any data on diet or physical activity. Another group that included both Walter Willett and Frank Hugh published a long speculative article in 2007 about reconciling the differences that failed to mention the errors in their paper that she mentioned earlier. Ended up announcing that the real problem was that we had asked the wrong question, even though they answered the exact same question in the 2005 paper, uh, Catherine Flagel's paper, as the one in 2004. When you convolute the waters because you don't have an answer, you confuse people, it's all by design. Does this sound familiar again? Think about the last year and a half. Things that were banned a year ago, censored a year ago, silenced a year ago, now suddenly being true. And back then we were told, trust the science. And if you don't trust the science, you're a conspiracy theorist nut. And now all those things that were conspiracy theories are actually valid today. You see the similarities? Almost as soon as our article appeared, a symposium was scheduled for the express purpose of criticizing our article. This is when you know you're doing something right. Catherine Flagel may not see it this way, but hopefully she'll hear this perspective. I'm going to send her this video so she can see this. But when there is this much animosity and vitriol and rushing to correct you, you hit a nerve. You touched on something that they were hoping wouldn't get out. You know too much, Catherine. You know something that they know inherently is true because what you did was real science. And the real science, the real stats that you found were legitimately what the real deal is. They didn't like that because the agenda was let's make obesity look like it's a killer. Because then I know these researchers are like, okay, well, if we can make it look like 15 plus percent of all deaths come from obesity, then we're going to get more money for obesity research. That's what Walter Willett and Frank Hugh were looking for. But then she blows the lid off of that with her much lower statistic. Again, 5% is still too much, but it's not this grand one that it was made out to be. One of the organizers of that event uh, that was going to criticize the article wrote to me to say that they viewed this as an opportunity to engage in a respectful and constructive examination of all the issues and provide a much more in-depth view for the media so they could more deeply understand what the paper was about. The lineup consisted of a small number of vocal critics Mostly uh, Walter Willett and Frank Hugh were the primary ones, all attacking our work and asserting that their previous research somehow showed that our estimates should have been higher, although their previous research not e did not even address the topic of estimating the number of deaths. The presentations at the symposium did not mention the multiple errors that were found in the 2004 paper. One of the speakers described us as having no biomedical background, even though the four authors on the article were all well-published senior scientists, all of them had doctorate degrees in nutrition or statistics, and one had a medical de degree from Harvard. Seeking to maximize the media coverage, the organizers arranged for the entire symposium to be live over the internet and encouraged reporters to watch it and then report on it. There were further attacks, many not all from the same group and its alumni, continuing over many years. These ranged over a broad gamut, criticisms that we repeatedly uh, refuted, generic minor criticisms that would apply to most articles in the general field, misinformation, content insults, or content free insults, name calling, sometimes outright falsehoods. Like you think it's just social media where all that stuff happens? This is science, guys. We think science is prestigious, and it is. But even behind the scenes of science, guys, they still play a lot of the same games you see play out on social media. It took me far too long to understand that our findings were being treated by some as a partisan issue rather than a topic of scientific discussion. 